today's video is all about the data mapper module, or more specifically, why the data mapper is so cool. And the first reason why data mapper is cool is because it is a completely separate entity from designer. And why this is awesome is because when you're generating your data mapping configuration, when you're extracting data from a PDF, TXT, an XML, or a database, you are basically just grabbing the data and creating a record set or data model directly from that data. And it's always the same structure. The data model is a generic type that has no reference to your input file. And this gives you two advantages. The first one is you can create many different data mapping configurations for the same design, or you can use one data mapping configuration for multiple design templates. And these will work together as long as you have the same data model, meaning there's a complete separation of data and design. And the second thing it lets you do is to concentrate on the designing aspect of it without having to worry about the data and vice versa. When you're doing data mapping, you don't need to think about how it's going to be displayed on the page. You just need to be thinking about how to extract the whole thing. Now, once you're really used to doing data mapping, you'll find yourself to be doing it really quickly. I've been using it for a couple of years, obviously, even before the software was out, and I can do a data mapping configuration on, say, an XML file really quickly. And I can show you that right away. All I need to do is to open a XML data source. I don't, I'm not even sure which one this is. I will just know when it opens. And within two minutes, I can, within two minutes, within a couple of seconds, I can actually have all of this data extracted super easily and super quickly. And I'm done. Like, th this is it. That's all you need to do to extract for an XML file. A CSV file is just this quick. You need a bit more work for TXT and PDF because it's locations, it's not separated in already existing fields. But the time I took to explain what I was doing, I was already done. This is the beauty of the data mapper. And the data model that we have on the right is the only thing that the designer will need to be looking at. And now that I have all my extracted data, let's say I have a backup system that can give me all this information in a CSV type. And the field names are different, the order is different, but the actual data is the same. And I want to create a data mapping that's the same as this one, or rather the same data model using the alternate file that's coming from a backup system or a secondary system. All I need to do is to export the data model. And then I create a new data mapping configuration with that CSV file. If I have one somewhere, I probably have one transactional that should be sufficient. And I load that same data model that I had before. And just changing or just extracting these fields directly into it, as long as I know what these fields are, I can do it directly here. And that's all that's necessary. Of, of course, I didn't set up my, uh, my boundaries here. So if I do on change column, there you go. So if I extract this information here and I create my loop and I extract all of these, I have exactly the same data model as the XML file and the same document or the same template will work exactly the same with either or. Is there anything else that's awesome about the data mapper? Well, the last thing is what I, I really like the preprocessor and the postprocessor. It's not used all the time, but it gives you a lot of power. 
When you go into the preprocessor, you can add a JavaScript execution that will run on your whole data file before you get it, meaning you can filter out certain characters, you can do a search and replace for some specific things, you can modify it so that it's actually compatible with the data mapper. For example, I have a JSON to XML converter that I can use in the preprocessor. So when I receive JSON data from a web form, I can do it directly in data mapper. And then you have the post processor, which lets you do something with the whole record set once it's done processing. So I can create a CSV file from that record set or an XML file, send it to another system. I can notify a system that the processing is finished. I can do a bunch of things on the input and the output data. And that does not affect the designer because the designer will run the data mapper, but it won't actually be changed by whatever happens in say the post processor. So there we have it. This is what I think is awesome with the data mapper module. If you've had a little bit of experience with it, how about you comment and tell me what you like about it and about using the data mapper. And this concludes today's Connect with Evie, the first ever recorded and produced by Objective Lynn. Um, I hope you learned something new today. If you have any questions, feedback, or if you have something that you'd like for me to address in a future video, please don't hesitate to comment below. And please subscribe if you want to be advised of any new videos that we produce. And as always, see you in a few clicks.